once again to It's a Mystery, the show that tries to solve those unbelievable mysteries that baffle us all. Once again, Gail and I will be tracking down some incredible stories. And in the studio, we will be attempting to solve other weird and wonderful cases. You will not believe this million to one coincidence. You'll be amazed by these secrets of the plant kingdom. And what is it that makes spooky TV and films so scary? OK, let's kick off today with a bit of a spooky story that has a very funny ending. It's a mystery what Alex Watts thought he saw as darkness fell. See what you think it is. Alex Watts was a security guard at the Church of St Aston the Great. Every evening, he would make his final tour around the premises making sure there were no visitors' bags or personal belongings left inside the church. Being an amazing and historically interesting church, lots of visitors pass through the doors every day. So as you can imagine, it was very important to make sure that nothing was left behind before people flooded in the next morning. Alex, as he looked around the church, would often spend a quiet moment admiring the intricate detail of the ancient stained glass windows. However, one summer's evening, as Alex was doing his usual checking, his eye caught something moving at the top of one of the windows. Alex was mystified. What was in the window? His eyes were transfixed. The more he looked at it, the more it seemed to move. Nervously, he began to shake, his spine shivering with fear. What on earth was it? Could it have been a pigeon? All sorts of birds made their way in through the old rafters into the church. But if it was a bird, why was it such a bizarre shape? From what he could make out, it looked much more like the face of a human. Alex couldn't work out what was going on. He became scared. Then suddenly, the object began to drift towards Alex. He was sure he could make out facial features. It seemed to be grinning eerily at him. He was sure it was a face, but it seemed to glisten in the light. He dare not move. The closer the face got to Alex, the more scared he became. He didn't know what to do. Should he run or should he stay rooted to the spot? What on earth was it? <sighs> Told you it was going to be spooky. So, OK. What was it that scared the security guard so much? How could the stained glass window have suddenly come to life? Was it really a you-know-what? Ghost. What do you think? Well, let's take a look at the facts. Whatever it was, it appeared to have a smiley face. It glistened a bit in the light and it drifted slowly to the ground. Well, you can come from behind your sofa now because the spooky mystery was easily solved when the object finally drifted to the ground. Alex realised that it was nothing more than one of these. <laughs> a funny shaped balloon with a smiley face on it. Someone must have let go of it whilst visiting the church during the day. And then later on, as the security man was doing his rounds, it gradually floated down and gave him a real fright. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay, here's a good one for you. It's a mystery how weird and wonderful the plant world can be. Now watch this, little experiment for you guys. Put these blindfolds on. Uh -huh. Okay, that's it. Oh, tell me when you can't man. see anything. Okay. I like this, Neil. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, can't see anything? No. no. Okay, now I've got I've got a plant here. It's actually it's a fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I want you to take a real good whiff of it. Okay. There you go. Give it a good whiff, guys. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> Neil! Yeah. What do you think, Chris? <laughs> good whiff. It smells like my socks. Go on, Gail. Oh, Neil. No, I'm sorry. Take it away. It it's smells like, oh. it's like rotting rubbish. It's disgusting. Oh. All right. I can still smell it. What okay. is it? Sorry about that one. I'm not telling you. Sorry about that one. Um, here's, look, take that as a peg for your nose. There you go, put that on there. Yeah, I've got okay. a little treat for oh, you right, now. Thank you. Now, that was bad, wasn't it? 
Yes. Yeah, I've got a little treat for you now. Oh, okay. What I'm going to do thanks is I'm going to give right, you something to eat. Okay. okay. Oh, with a pit. Oh. Oh. Right, here we go. Oh. There we go. Oh, I don't want good. you to smell that other thing, you see. Now, this is something to eat. There we go. Wait, uh, <laughs> here we go. That's it in your mouth. There it goes. Oh, that's there quite goes. nice. It's a bit like custard. What do you think of that, then? That was good. Okay, take off your blindfolds and your pegs. Oh, mm. out. That was good, actually. And see mm. what it is that you smelt and ate. It's exactly the it's same exactly thing. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. <laughs> exactly wow. the same thing. Now, it's called a durian fruit, and it's from the durian tree, which grows in forests in Southeast Asia. And get this, it's actually rated by many people as the world's most delicious food. Well, I've got a little plant that is absolutely fascinating. It eats flesh. Oh, Ooh. this just gets better all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not human flesh, it's flies flesh. And believe it or not, the larger tropical ones will even trap little animals like frogs. Mm. This is the meat eater of the plant world, the Venus fly trap. Insects are attracted by the red colouring and the nectar at the base of these spikes. On each trap is up to 40 trigger hairs, and these trigger hairs can detect movement. So for example, if a dead leaf fell onto the sensitive trigger hairs and didn't move, the plant jaws will stay open. But if something like an insect was moving around on the hairs, the plant reacts as if dinner has arrived and the jaws of the trap snap shut. Well, Amazing. I've got one for you. Check out this little fella. Now, he mightn't be so greedy, but he's just as spectacular. This is a mimosa pudica plant, and the leaves close up as a defence when something touches it. You don't believe me? Well, watch this. Go around here, touch that, and look at them go. They're oh, all wow. open up. So, OK, we've proved the point. Plants really can be amazing. And, you know, if you think about it, we actually rely on plants an awful lot in our day-to-day -day lives. In fact, all of these things come from plants in some way. So, OK, here's a little game for you. Just see if you can guess which plant goes with which object. So, OK, let's start with this plant. What about this one? Take a look at the objects. There they are. Any idea? OK, well, this is a tea plant. And obviously, it goes with the pot of tea. Now, all tea comes from plants, whether it's this tea plant or mint or strawberry or orange, whatever. And what about these sunflowers? What do we think comes from these? Well, the oil from the seeds has been used for nearly 200 years, and today it's a major ingredient in cooking oil and margarine. How about this then? An avocado pear. You know, the thing some people have in salads and sandwiches, that sort of stuff? Well, it goes with this. Lipstick. Now, avocados have been around for thousands of years, and the oil from them is an essential part in making lipstick. So there you go, you see, plants really are quite amazing. It's a mystery just how big a coincidence can be. One day in July 1992, Jason Pegler was working at a branch of the AA in Dover. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, okay, Take bye. Care. Have a good time. This particular day, he was leaving early to go to a family party in Folkestone. Once he'd been home to change, he and his wife left the house and started walking to the party. How are we doing for time? Yeah, fine. We got back to time. Back at the office, things weren't going quite according to plan. Jason's colleague Sue was rushed off her feet. And to make matters worse, the fax machine was broken. Jason knew how to fix it, so Sue hurried to the phone and dialed his home number. But of course, Jason and his wife weren't at home. They were walking to the party. And on the way, they happened to be passing a phone box. And at precisely that moment... I'll go and answer it. Tell them that they've got a wrong number. All right. Hello? Hi, Jason, it's Sue. Um, listen, I'm having a few problems. Sue? How would you know I was here? Oh, you said you'd be at home before the party. Um, listen, I'm having a few problems with the fax machine. Sue, listen, this is a phone box. I'm not at home. <laughs> oh, no, look, stop... You've called a phone box. Look, stop messing around. How, how can I fix this fax machine, do you know? 
Jason couldn't believe his ears. It took him a few minutes to finally convince her of what had happened. What an amazing story. So, okay, how did it happen? Was it a cross line? What had caused Sue to call the phone box? Was it just a bizarre coincidence? There are 27 million phone lines in Britain and billions of combinations of numbers and codes. Now, Sue had made one small mistake in dialing the number and instead of calling Jason's home number, she had amazingly called the number of a local phone box. Now, even more strange is the fact that Jason and his wife happened to be walking past at the precise moment that the phone rang. But I just how can a mistake like that happen? Well, it turned out that Sue had correctly dialed the code for Folkestone, 01303. But when she was looking for his number, she accidentally dialed his personal AA staff number rather than his home number. It turned out that the combination of the Folkestone code and his personal AA staff number was the exact phone number of the phone box that they were passing. Incredible! What are the chances of that happening? One in a million? And not only that, for it to happen at exactly the same time that Jason was passing the phone box. So, okay, was it all down to luck? Maybe fate? Or is it all down to an amazing coincidence? What do you think? Hi, I'm Mark Nicholson. I work here at the Cornwall Wildlife Trust, where we look after the wildlife and wild places of this county. A few years ago, I came across some strange coloured creatures I'd never seen before. Part of my job is to tell people about wildlife, and I'm particularly keen on frogs and toads. So in February 1994, when someone told me they had an orange frog in their garden, I couldn't resist going to have a look. When I got there, sure enough, it was an orange frog. But when I looked at the features closely, everything about it was the same as the normal green or brown common frog. And strangely enough, we found that lots of others had seen them as well, particularly in the south of England. Not just orange frogs, but cream, yellow, pink, white, you name it. Last spring I found some tadpoles which were very strange. They were see-through, you could see everything inside them, and they had an orange colour to them. So I collected some, looked after them at home, and now they've turned into orange froglets. We've all grown up to accept frogs as being green, or perhaps brown, but orange frogs are still incredible. <laughs> no, it's not a joke. Actually, it's true, there really have been sightings of strange coloured frogs from all over the country, but mainly in the south of England. Now, in all, there have been over 120 places in the country where strange coloured frogs have been sighted. And this weird phenomenon has even made the national newspapers, with a collection of rather corny headlines earlier this year. How about this? A croak of many colours as frogs lose green gene. Or what about this one? The amazing Technicolor dream crow. Yeah, OK. So, all right then, why are the frogs such a strange colour? Well, experts believe that these unusual frogs are actually born albinos, without any colour or proper pigmentation in their skin. This explains why they're not the normal brown or green colour, but an amazing orange colour. Now, of course, they are still very rare, but they are out there. So keep an eye out for them. Guys, I've got something for you. It's a mystery how spooky music can be. What do you mean by that? Well, when you listen to music on CD or radio or cassettes, it can spark off a whole range of powerful emotions, can't it? Yeah, so what's the point? OK, well, listen to this piece of music and then tell me how it makes you feel. Okay? Piper. Yeah, yeah That's good. It's got a good sound, yeah. 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 OK, now listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it off. Turn it off. It's had the right effect. It makes you feel sad, sure. doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we've heard some music that makes you want to dance. We've heard some music that made you feel a bit sad. Yeah. Now try this. Wow. Dramatic. Feels like something's about to go down. 
Well, that is scary enough. But what happens when you combine scary music with scary pictures on the telly? Well, remember my story about the security guard in the church? Let's take another look at it. However, one summer's evening, as Alex was doing his usual checking, his eye caught something moving at the top of one of the windows. Alex was mystified. What was in the window? His eyes were transfixed. The more he looked at it, the more it seemed to move. Nervously, he began to shake, his spine shivering with fear. Wow. Very Pretty scary stuff. Scary stuff. <laughs> now, was it all down to the story and pictures, or could the music have had something to do with it? You would always think that it'd be the pictures. Yes, yeah, I mean, telly. you know, pictures. Yeah. Very many bumps on the back yeah. of that thing. That's what makes you jump. Well, a lot of people think that, but although they think that, the pictures are not the most important thing in TV. Sound is just as important too. Take another look at it, but this time without music. One summer's evening, as Alex was doing his usual checking, his eye caught something moving at the top of one of the windows. Alex was mystified. Mm. You keep waiting when they go to reveal what it is. You, you wait for the music, don't you? It's Here we go. Scary bit. It's yeah. scary the more he looked at it, the more it seemed to move. Nervously, he began to shake, his spine shivering with fear. Not scary. You want the music, don't you? Yeah. I've never it, wanted it. It makes such a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it does add that extra layer of atmosphere. Now we're going to try it again, okay? But I've got another piece of film. Have a wee look at this one. Boring. Mm. Okay. Boring. Yeah. All right, we've had enough of that. Yeah. Nothing, okay. yep. Uh, Spiders yeah. just walking across screen. Get yeah. Shot yeah. Of it, yeah. No music, nothing. Now, watch it again, but with a certain kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I want a spider as a pet. Ah, Give me one. It's ah like but a do you? Do you really want one? Watch it again, but this time a different kind of music. Mm -hmm. That's really silly. Oh, hold on. Look at that. Tristy, you still want a spider. Very That's ominous, really isn't it? Creepy, isn't it? It mm. makes such a difference. Yeah. Now, we're going to have a final go, guys, OK? Oh, yeah. Have a look at this piece of film. Nothing, Very not flat. Yeah, nothing's yeah. happening at all, is it? Yeah. Now, with music. OK. <laughs> oh, it's a comedy. Yeah. It's a comedy. <laughs> you would think that, but you, you recognise the music. <laughs> Look at the funny you, green children. It d just doesn't work no, together. No. Now, finally, we've got another piece of music on that same piece of film. Mm -hmm. oh, that's better. Yeah, it's, better. It's, it's like Star Trek or something, isn't it? Mm. The oh, green that's really children. quite scary. It's like the, the space monsters yeah. have come in. Taking over the world. But did you realise that music would make such a difference yeah. to the picture? Yeah, it really mm. did. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. So there you go, the mystery is solved. Music can be very scary, a bit scary, and not scary at all. Oh, and by the way, next time you're scared by something on TV, just go and turn the sound down. It works for me every time. <laughs>